Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the 1 to 100 player game, Cartographers, designed by Jordi Auden and published by Thunderworks Games, who helped sponsor this video. The Queen wishes to reclaim the Northern lands, and she sent you all out to map its various regions, and she'll reward the cartographer who can find her most desired landscapes. But it won't be easy, because things lurk in those dark, unexplored territories. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, give each player one of these double-sided map sheets. But players must all agree to use the same side for a particular game. We're going to set up for two players, so we've pulled off two sheets. There are a total of 100 sheets included in the game, and that's why it says you can have 1 to 100 players. But if you run out, you can also download extras for free from the Thunderworks website. Now give each player one of the included pencils. Four come in the game, so if you have more players than that, you'll need to provide some extras. At the top of your sheet, you can write in your name and, optionally, a title, a name of the region you're exploring, and if you want to, you can even draw in a family crest. These are the four edict cards, which you'll order in a row like I have here. A, B, C, and then D. The cards with these backs are the scoring cards, and you'll sort them into four stacks according to their four different backs, and then you'll shuffle them separately and randomly place one card from each stack face up below the edicts in any random order. The rest you can then return to the box. These are the four season cards, which you'll arrange into a face-up pile starting with spring, then summer, fall, and winter. Now take the cards with this back, known as the explore cards, and find amongst them the four ambush cards, which will have illustrations of monsters on their front and a purple border here at the bottom. You'll shuffle these into their own face-down pile, and then take one of them unseen to shuffle into the rest of the explore cards, which you'll set face down nearby. And then the rest of these ambush cards, just so they don't get confused with the other ones that you have out, you can set aside, but keep them nearby because we'll need those later. And that's the setup. In Cartographers, players will be mapping sections of land on their personal sheet from the shapes that are revealed from the deck, all the while trying to avoid monsters that might pop up and satisfy the scoring requirements set out by the Queen's Edict. The game is played over four seasons, broken into turns, and each turn is made up of three phases, starting with the Explore phase. Here, you'll flip over the top card of the Explore deck so that everyone can see it, and let's just stop here and take a quick tour of what these will show. Most will show some combination of terrain types within these square boxes. For example, here we have forests and farms, as well as villages and water. And then below that, you'll find either one or two different shapes, and sometimes a coin as well. These are the standard types of cards you'll find, but you may come across some other ones as well, but we'll discuss those a little bit later. With the card revealed, move to the draw phase, where at the same time, each player will choose one of the shapes shown, drawing it for themselves on their own map, and then filling it in with one of the types of terrain that are offered. Now, in this case, there's only one shape here, so the players will each have to draw this one, but then they can pick to either turn it into forests or farmland. You draw the shape by outlining the boxes on your sheet, but you cannot overlap spaces you already filled in from previous turns or draw outside of the borders of the map. These are mountain spaces, and you can't overlap these either. Now, if you had agreed to use the other side of the sheet for this game, these are wasteland spaces, and they can't be drawn over either. Now, you are allowed to rotate or flip the shape that you picked, as long as you keep the original arrangement of squares. For example, I might choose to flip this shape and then draw it in on my sheet like this. Once you have your outline drawn, you'll fill in the spaces with the chosen terrain type to make it obvious which type of terrain it is. It doesn't have to be an exact drawing like you see here. Sometimes for the forest, I'll just draw circles. Or if I'm feeling creative, I'll keep a couple of colored pencils nearby and then just color in the whole space. Again, the most important thing is that anyone, especially you, can look at your own map and know exactly which type of terrain you chose. As we'll see, as the game goes on, you'll be receiving new shapes to draw and fill in on your sheet. And eventually, as your sheet fills up, it may be impossible to legally draw the given shape. And if so, then you must outline just a single space and then fill it in with one of the given terrain types. Now, just keep in mind, 
if there is a shape on the card that you can legally fit somewhere, as we obviously can here, then you must draw that shape. You can't choose to ignore it and just draw in a single square. Now I realize we're getting a little ahead of ourselves because now I've drawn a second card and started filling in other spaces on the map, which wouldn't happen just yet, but let me finish filling in these spaces so I can tell you about another feature that you'll find on these sheets. As I mentioned earlier, these spaces here are mountains, and if you ever fill in all four spaces directly adjacent to a mountain, in other words, not including diagonals, then you fill in the first available coin on this row going from left to right. Now, some shapes on cards will show a coin beside them. And if you ever pick that shape to draw, let's just say we decided to put, let's say, two forests down here in this corner drawing this shape, then you would also cross off the next available coin on your track. And we'll see the value of these coins a little bit later. All right, let's go back to talking about the steps of a turn. So first of all, you have the explore phase where you draw a card from the top of the deck. And then you have the draw phase where each person picks one of the symbols shown and fills it in with one of the types of terrain. So I've reset my sheet here so I only have one symbol again and it's a farmland. My opponent drew that shape in a different orientation and turned it into forest. When all of the players are ready, you then move to the check phase where you'll check to see if the current season has ended. And to do this, you look at the value shown here in the top left hand corner of the current season's card, which in this case is an 8. You now add together all of the time values from the explore cards revealed so far. We only have 1 here, so our total time is 2. If the total ever meets or exceeds the time threshold, the current season ends and you proceed to the next season, which we'll talk about in a moment. If the total is less than the time threshold, the current season continues and you'll start a new round with a new explore phase. Now as you continue to flip over new cards, overlap them like this so that the values can be easily seen when checking for the end of the season. But with that understood, there are also some special cards in this deck which we haven't discussed, so let's do that now. Sometimes you'll flip over an ambush card which will have a purple border at the bottom and a picture of monsters attacking. When this happens, check the direction of the arrows shown here. Each player then passes their map sheet to the player in that direction, and then you'll draw the shape shown on your opponent's sheet. You'll follow all the normal rules when drawing this shape, but then fill it in with the monster terrain type symbol. And if there's no space to draw the depicted shape on the ambush card, just draw a single box anywhere and fill it in with the monster type symbol. With the monster shapes drawn, you then pass all map sheets back to their original owners, and you discard the ambush card from the game, returning it to the box. The problem with these ambushes is that each player will score negative points for empty spaces around the monster squares on their sheet, but we'll see when that happens a little bit later. When revealing explore cards, you may uncover ruins like this, and if so, immediately flip another card until you reveal a regular one. You then draw a shape from it as normal, except that at least one of its spaces must overlap one of the ruin spaces that are pre-printed on your sheet. If you cannot legally draw one of the shapes so that it overlaps a ruins, then you instead must draw a single square and fill it in with any one of the terrain types shown. Now, during the game, you can cover up a ruins space with any explore card shape that is revealed, even if a ruins card wasn't revealed first. But this may mean that you won't have any of these left if you are required to draw over a ruins when one of these cards is flipped later. If after a ruins is revealed, the next card that you draw is also a ruins, then just ignore it and keep drawing until you get to an explore card, which you will then use to draw its shape over top of one of the ruin symbols on your map. On the other hand, if after revealing a ruin, you get an ambush, then stop and resolve the ambush effect, and then when that is done, draw another card, and the ruins effect will then apply to its shape. Eventually, you'll have revealed enough of the explorer cards so that during the check phase, the total values shown on them will equal or exceed the value of the current season, which will cause that season to end. And when that happens, you'll now gain or lose some points. 
First, look at the season card to see which of these two scoring cards are now to be resolved. Here it says A and B, so we'll be scoring these and ignoring any others. Each person now gains points based on how well their map meets the requirements of the scoring cards for this season. In the illustrations, stars represent victory points, and you also have an explanation down here to explain how this particular card works. So for example, this one says that you score one point for every forest space adjacent to the edge of the map. So for me, with this configuration here, I would score one, two, three, four points, which I would then fill into the Edict A space shown here, which I'm trying to do upside down. At the bottom of the sheet, you will find scoring sections for each of the seasons. This one is for spring, this one is for summer, and so on. Sometimes a card will refer to a cluster. For example, this one says that you earn eight victory points for every cluster of six or more village spaces. A cluster is any group of connected spaces that all share the same terrain type. And to be considered connected spaces, the squares must share at least one full edge with each other. So here we have 12 spaces that make up a single village cluster. Down here we have a separate cluster of two village spaces. These are not connected because they only touch on a corner. So if we were scoring for this card, we would earn eight points for this cluster here and nothing for this one. It's important to realize that once spaces are connected, you cannot break them apart. For example, to make one of these clusters, we need only six spaces, and there's 12 here, but we can't say these are two separate clusters of six and then score this twice because all of these are connected as one big cluster. If a card ever refers to filled in spaces, you count any that are filled in, of course, and that will include monster and mountain spaces. Ruins are not considered filled in, until terrain has been drawn over top of them, like we see here. We won't go through how all the scoring cards work, as they are explained on the cards themselves, and at the back of the rulebook if you need some additional help. Going back to our scoring for spring, we would also score Edict B, which we talked about earlier, and unfortunately on my sheet I didn't have any clusters of six or more villages, so I scored zero points for this one, which I marked into the B space here. In this space, we're now going to score our coins. To do this, just total up the number of coins that you've filled in on the track here. So in this case, it's a two for me, which hopefully I'm drawing correctly, again, despite being upside down. Finally, you lose one point for every empty space adjacent to a monster on your map, not including diagonally. If a space is adjacent to multiple monsters, like this one is, you just lose a single point for it. So in this case, I'd lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. I'm gonna to want to get these spaces filled in very soon. You mark any monster losses here, and then you total all of these values together and put the final amount into this space. And yes, I realize my score is minus one. I wasn't paying attention to the scoring cards when I was filling in spaces on the map during my examples. With the season scored, you now remove its card from the game revealing the next season, and these will show a new combination of edicts that will be scored at the end of its season. But also be sure to check the value here, as some of them will be different as time goes on. Either way, you now collect all of the Explore cards that were played, including any that were in the deck, and you add to these the next card from the Ambush deck, shuffling all of this together into a new Explore deck and then continuing with a new round. And I should point out, if an ambush card didn't come out during a previous round, that means you might have two or more in future rounds. Now eventually, when you get to the end of the winter season, the game is over, and now it's time to determine the winner. To do this, each player will total all the points they have from each of the seasons, marking that final value here, and the player with the most points wins. If there's a tie, the tied player who lost the least total number of points to monsters wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied players share the victory. You'll also find rules for a solo mode included at the back of the rulebook, but those I'll leave you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's how you play cartographers. Now, if you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. 
And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.